Hi, I'm Pete, and welcome to Just a Few Acres Farm at Red Power Roundup in Grand Island, Nebraska. Day three, this is Saturday, the last day of the show. And it should be interesting. I have a meetup scheduled today for a couple hours toward the middle of the day. I don't know if there will be as many people here today, but we have time here first thing in the morning to go through this huge building full of just shiny, beautiful tractors and take a look at them. I have not been through this building in, it's just mind blowing how many labors of love that there are in here. Just beautifully restored tractors, one after the other. I just don't know what to say. I have never seen so many in one place. And what I'm thinking of when I look at these tractors is that each one is hundreds and hundreds of hours on the part of somebody or some family tearing it down piece by piece because that's what these all are I think and putting them back together and it's certainly not a labor of money it's a labor of I love this tractor and I want to make it better than new and all those memories and labor and care that means more to me actually in the end than the physical object itself it's what you put into it 1928 regular, the first farm all model, and a beast, 1456. This thing is big. I think it would pull my hay rake, but I don't know. I might have to throttle it up a little bit. And we have even a few like this. This is uh, Super MTA diesel that's original. And that means a whole lot to me too, because every wear mark, you know, like right here, where hands have touched it over decades and wore away the paint. And just the character that's in the patina on this tractor, that's okay in my book too. That just tells a different story. That's all is the tractor that's been all meticulously restored. And then we have these that have a few user upgrades. This is an LPG or um, propane tractor. It's got a V8 in it. That's not original, and boot, it's a high crop, which makes it really interesting. I wonder why there's this automotive belt hooked to the belt pulley here. I'm curious to know what they would be running with that. I guess that's the V8 there, 289. Nice 450. This tractor I really consider the fourth generation of the M. Went M, Super M, Super MTAs kind of one then the 400, and then the pinnacle of kind of the M evolution, the 450, before really the 560 came out and replaced that. Just beautiful. Look at the size of those front tires. What are they? 1116 SLs. Amazing attention to detail. 806 diesel front wheel assist. The original clamshell fenders on it. Cabbed 1256, there's an air conditioning pump on the side there. Here's a 544 utility hydro. Nice 706 diesel. The engine that's in this is the same engine that's in the 656 that I own. It's the International D28 diesel 282. This engine had so many different lives and different tractors over the course of a couple decades at least. Started out in 560 and then came into the early 706. I believe it ran at higher RPMs than my 656 and there were some other small differences in the engine. The 706 switched over to the German diesel later in its production, which in my opinion, most people's opinion is a better engine. The D310, the German built D310. So it was in the late 706, then in the 656, which came out after the 706, they put the D282 in that, and they put the D310 in the 756, which really is the model that succeeds the 706. It's interesting to look at the families of engine, in, in, engines in International Harvester, say the C113 that started out in the C, and follow it up through the models and see how far it lasted, like in the case of that family of engine, it lasted a long time, all the way up through the 140 and the 504, the C113 engine. But that's the kind of things I think collectors get into, is understanding 
the family tree of models and engines and features that evolved through time. And right here, right behind it is 560 with the same engine in it, the D282. Super MTA, look at the wheel weights on this tractor. They're hanging way out there. One, two, three, four, five, six. Makes it look like it means business. And something we don't see in my neck of the woods, WDR9, this is a rice field special, like a Wheatland tractor. You don't see the 9 Series out east where I live too much. This is something you see more in the Midwest. These tractors were just designed to pull. Drawbar pulling all day long, that's what they were designed for. Nice 656 with gas in it. The gas engines in these were C263s, which carbureted 263 engine, six cylinder of course. Gear drive, not hydro. Other subtle differences that collectors notice. The 656 had a relatively long run and I don't have the dates at the top of my head, but the early 656s started out with a grill like this, which is more like a 706 grill, and then they went to the bar grill like my 656 has on it. They also changed the color scheme. The later 656s, this stripe runs all the way through here, and then this would be colored red, so you've got that white stripe like my 756 but the early ones come right down. Pretty much no matter what international track do you look at, there's this line of, this family tree line, line of improvement, and you can trace it through models that go over decades. For instance, this Super H here, of course, was the successor to the H, and the, cha the, cha the minor changes were many from the H to the Super H, but a lot of it was just power. You know, as that, that horsepower needs kept going up they kept adding more power so you can look at the family tree as being from the f series and people will sort of disagree whether the f12 or the f20 was the precursor to the h but it goes from the f's to the h and then to the super h and then from the super h to the 300 with all new sheet metal and even more power than super h then to the 350 and then the family tree for the H kind of gets a little funny. I, some people will say, well, it went on to the 504, but the H engine didn't evolve into the 504. It was actually the A engine that came into the 504. And it's interesting how things split and, and combine and how International Harvester used things that they had developed earlier and sort of redesign them or evolve their design to get more power out of them to both transmissions and engines and to make them more suitable for agricultural uses as they evolved with things like live power takeoff live um, hydraulics more power higher rpms different field speeds and more of a range of field speeds as we get into the later tractors where you know you have 16 speeds or 32 speeds with torque amplifier all that kept just kept developing in the 20th century at a really rapid pace and here's the successor to that super h 300 you can see how different it is they really brought the styling up to the 1950s chrome chrome on automobiles chrome on tractors of course live power takeoff there's the unit back there we've got live hydraulics Driven off a pump off the timing gears here, which is the way International did it until the 7 Series when they put it back in the transmission area. 1970, gold demonstrator. 1950, white demonstrator. This is a 504 gas. Just like mine. Well, not quite like mine. This is a Chisholm Rider, which was an aftermarket modification of 504s. And we see a lot of these in New York. For uh, riding over beans and picking beans, you could straddle the row with the tractor and put the implement down below the tractor for cutting beans. She's tall. No PTO, no PTO needed. I don't think any hydraulics either, except for power steering. Look at this monster. Hi. <laughs> Somebody got real creative here. Well, it took a little while to get that in there. Is this yours? Oh my gosh, I have a YouTube channel, so I'm filming oh, for YouTube. Oh. And somebody told me about this tractor the other day, and I didn't get back here to see it. It is one engine. Yes, yes it, is. it is. This is a GM V12? Yes. 
Yes. How many horsepower does it make? Do you know? It's rated at 275 horse at 2400 RPM. 20, yeah, 2400 RPM. It's pretty enough just to look at. Uh, well, that's, that's the only thing for. he does. Yeah. That's what it's for, is just for something that my son and I put together because we can. Well, it's nice meeting you. What's your name? Schulting. Don Schulting. Where are you from? Springfield, Nebraska. Ah. Just outside of Omaha. Beautiful tractor. Thank you, sir. You, you had, he got a lot of hours into this. Oh. All you see from the sides are exhaust. The carburetors are tucked up, of course, in the center. And there's two distributors. They, they're both in the back of the engine here. I thought they'd be up top, but they're in the back. This is one of those things you do because you can and you have time and it winds up being really unique. I want to introduce you to a longtime viewer. This is one crazy Nordlander. Comes from my neck of the world, I think, with that kind of handle. Oh yeah, you bet. Yeah. <laughs> Commented on a lot of the videos, and you're from? Uh, Minnesota, Porter, Minnesota. Canby, Minnesota, Marshall, Minnesota, in that area. So if and you're looking for it. Your real name is? Kevin. Kevin. Kevin, yes. So I, ha I think I've met a thousand viewers. In okay. the last few days. Really? Wow. Yep. And this it's been the best part of the show. Oh good. Yeah, because you good go home with a lot of gas in the tank. You know? Oh yeah. Nice 1020 all painted up. I think because this show is focusing on the farm all this year, there's not a lot of well the the 1020 was actually a competitor to the first farm all. They were in production at the same time. There's big history to the company discussions about one versus the other and which to market. And you don't see a uh, you see F series because they're farm alls, but not a lot that's earlier than the F-Series, the old big traction engines, and the Moguls, and the Titans, and the 816s. This is all farm all here. Did International ever make an HTA, an H version of the MTA? The definitive no excuses answer is no, they did not make an HTA. And although a lot of people will say that they did and they saw one for sale, farm all did, or International Harvester did experiment with the H version of the MTA, but they decided to hold on its release till the 300 came out, whereas with the M, they did release the MTA. There are no existing examples of a true HTA, international scrapped whatever experimental models they had. So if you see one and somebody wants a crazy amount of money for it, it's not real. And the way people make these is they take the front end from an H, and of course, you know, it may be a Super H engine or something like that, and then they made it to the back end of a 300, so that then essentially they've got an H with a torque amplifier on it. It sounds like it's timed like a John Deere where it's one right after the other in stroke. Yeah. What model tractor is that? GLD2. German tractor. So that, I thought it said old. Oh. <laughs> well, it was old. But. So this, was this made in Germany? Yeah. Wow. Super AV, everything is the same as a regular A on these, except the spindles and the front axle are different. Obviously, the spindles and the knees are longer. Bigger front tires to raise it up, bigger rear tires to raise it up. Strangely, I haven't seen very many 86 series tractors here, but here's one in 886. This is an 856 diesel front wheel assist, and it looks big. And for all these, including my 756, my 656, you could get either 34-inch rims on them or like this, 38-inch rims, and it really changes the appearance of the tractor. I personally, I like the 38s with the wides on them, but that's just me. This is a mule, shop mule, used to tow things around real low. It's got an A-series engine in it, a 113 family. And they used to use these for towing things around shops and also for towing airplanes. It's got a pinnel on the back of it. Number 10 manure spreader, really nicely restored. It's just pristine. Did the wood up on the inside nice. I don't know, I'd think twice about sending any manure through this. It just looks perfect. This is an O12, Orchard 12. Very small tractor, same engine as an F12, but brought down for special use because it's low. And just always surprised by, you know, how small these tractors are. They're just packed tight. 560 diesel, here's some nice weight, cheaply done. I mean, and they did a good job on it. It's concrete, of course, you know, with what steel's costing these days, or cast weights, that's a good alternative. It's time to meet viewers for the next couple hours, and 
I have a bunch here already, and this is Suzanne. Suzanne. And Jeff. And Jeff, and you're from. We're from Washington State. On our way to Texas right now. That's great. And you stopped for the for the day yeah. at the show. We made it in last night. Figured we'd pick you up the last day of the show here, and then head on tomorrow morning. Great. Well, it's great yeah. to meet you. Love your show. Thank you. Look at that. What's your name? Uh, my name's Dan, and this is my family of Amanda, Hi. Bailey, Maddie, Logan's hiding behind me, and there's Jessica. Where's Logan? He's right now. What are you doing down there? <laughs> He's shy. <laughs> Looks like you're excited to be here. I'm Kevin, and this is Anne Marie. Nice to meet so you. Nice to meet you, Pete. We're from Central Pennsylvania. So just, oh, just my couple, neck of the woods. Yeah, a couple hours south of you. How did so you like the show? You. The show's been amazing. I've met so many great people yeah. with great equipment. I just. Mm -hmm. I'm blown away. I more than I expected. Yeah. I'm filming, being filmed, being filmed. Uh, well, you know how that goes. Yeah. <laughs> Hi. Hi. It's left-handed Jake. Okay. I'm Christine Gillum. Christine. Johnny Gillum. John. Yes. Nice to meet John. you. Where are you? Where are you from? Tulsa, Oklahoma. Oklahoma. Yeah. I'm ready yeah. to find me a farm and take it home. <laughs> <laughs> Well, fit in your trunk? Did you bring a car? Yeah, we brought a Honda because it's a little good on the gas mileage. Have you been to the show all three days? No. In fact, I'm not really an international guy. I just came to see you. <laughs> well, by the time you leave here, you will. Because you're famous. Yeah. Go yeah. look at all these tractors and you'll be in we've been walk We've been walking around, but you're not one of those green guys, though. Yeah. I, did, I did buy an international, though. So far, it's been good for an expense. <laughs> Hi. How are you? I'm well, thanks. Good. What's your name? Ryan McNutt. I made one exception that I'm more of a John Deere guy. I know, I know. What? They keep coming. Uh, Here we have some very young and shy viewers. What's your name? Addie? Ellie. Ellie. Sorry. Ellie. Nice to meet you, Ellie. What's your name? Gus. Gus. Got that one. Yep. You like red tractors? Do you watch just a few acres farm? Yes. What's your favorite part? I, I like when I the cows. What about you? Bailing hay, driving through the field. What's your name? Mason. How old are you? <laughs> It's nice to meet you. <laughs> this is Mason's dad. Your name is? I'm Heath. Heath. Yep. Uh, and is this your dad? This is my dad, Tom. So three generations. Yep. Yeah, Tom. Yeah. So I farm uh, just south of Omaha. Okay. So we run green, but we do have uh, we do have two international H's, though. When my uncle first started farming, though, he was all red. So uh -huh. I, I have nothing against international tractors. It's either. hard not to go green now, you know, if you want something to be in America. Yeah. Well, so works for I, work, I work for dealer, oh, okay. dealers of tech, too. Hey, look at this guy. Tractor's made of all kinds of different parts off of farm malls. Yeah. Mm hmm. This must be his heart. And the two days previously I was here, I have not been in this room, and this looks like it's filled with lots of small stuff that I missed. Yes, international made tools. International advertising. World War II. International made a lot of stuff for World War II. Half tracks and rifles. I did not know that international made space heaters. Salamanders. And of course, international made freezers. These are chest freezers with thick insulation, probably not as high performance insulation as in modern freezers, but these things lasted forever. I know of a few that are still running near where we live. And many, many cream separators that international made. That goes right along. If you got a farm in the old days, usually you were making butter, had cream separator. Lots of different ones here. And corn shellers, often used for saving seed for the next year. That's a big corn sheller. There's an old, old video on the channel where I was goofing around and I showed one of these. We have one. This is for sharpening sickle bar sections. You'd sit on here, pedal the pedals, and 
it sharpens them on the stone right here. When I was a kid, I used to play on the one that we have. I'd get on here and pedal and pedal and <laughs> mess around with it. Toy tractors, you gotta start them young. Old international tools. Most tractors would be supplied with a few tools for repair. It only took a few back in the old days. Yeah. I've never seen one of these before. This is a 770 self-propelled sprayer from 1970. I didn't know that International made one. Of course, it's high. The sprayers need to be when you're spraying crops that have already come up. Somebody did a very nice job restoring it. And here's where the booms fold out in the back. Two row mounted corn picker on an M. So the tractor is completely buried under there. You can see a rear wheel there. Come around the back. There's another wheel. <laughs> Here's the tractor under here. And then the intake for the radiator was up here so that it didn't get clogged up with trash coming in from the stalks. So it has a bigger screen and that. It's called a super snoot. You can't really read it there, but that's what it is. Oh, that dog does not like that tractor. This is a gas start diesel hand crank. Ain't gonna go. Oh, this is a WD-40, the earliest gas start diesel that I each made. I'm probably cranking it in front of 20 people's pretty stressful. Oh, oh, hey! Thank you, yeah. So just like the MD and later, looks like gas on that side, and looks like diesel on this side. He said he put a later pump on it, though. You can see that's an A pump. They use those on the MD later. The first pumps would count a certain number of revolutions of the engine on gas and then automatically switched over to diesel. There we go. It's tractor parade time. Lots of people out here to watch tractors go by. Listen to that 282 in the 706. It just sounds great. A 19. 57 model tractor, got the fenders on it. Like we seen earlier, the 39 had the saddle with it. The Oberhauser up next to it, right here in the 86 standard draw bar in it. Uh, I believe this one still has it here. It did? Okay. Very, very solid piece of equipment, one of the best assistants out there. One of my favorites between it. Uh, Chicago and Louisville, Kentucky. What are you showing us? He's got an ice cream maker on the back deal? of there. That's it. So again, a, a wheat limit crops and so forth, we got to have the high height. Again, used for a lot of truck farming. 1914. Now, so the 234 picker, uh, it's working condition. Here's an up, it's got a baler behind it, but wait a second. It's electric, electrol baler. Another something you don't see every day. F30 high crop. Red Power is wrapping up. It's Saturday afternoon, about four o'clock. A lot of the tractors are pulling out of here. The parade's over, everything's done. I had a great time. It was nonstop from beginning to end here for three days. I would say that I met at least a thousand viewers over the course of three days. It was just to me, I didn't know what to expect coming out here, how big the show would be, how many people would know who I was. And it was just amazing and I loved it. The, the, there's a couple things I notice. you know, people aren't all that different here than, and, and I met people from all over the Midwest and out to California and some people from back east and pretty much the same as they are, me and my neighbors in New York and we talk about farming and it's kind of a common language, your old equipment, it's a common language. And, these kinds of places are filled with happy people because they're doing what they love. So I'm already thinking about going to Iowa next year to Red Power Roundup in 2024. There's just so much to see. I guess that sums it up. I can't think of anything else. I provide a lot of coverage of this event. I hope you enjoyed it for those of you that couldn't make it or for those of you that could, maybe it's some good memories. Thanks for joining me and I'll see you next time.